Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. Welcome back to my week 33 wrap up. 33. We've been do I've been doing this for 33 weeks. I'm so excited. Announcements. <clears throat> there is one more live show that Release Thon is going to do. And this one is going to be on Friday the 26th in the evening. Here's the graphic that shows the time. I'm not sure whose channel that's going to be on, but once I find out, I will have that linked down below so that you can find that. I hope that New Release of Thon has been going well for you and you've been at least able to read one book that was published in 2022 and that you enjoyed it. So the self-published science fiction contest has officially begun and it's starting off with a cover contest and so each of the groups are going through their covers and selecting the ones that they like best and then that will be brought into everyone and then goes through another process. I've also started, as we we're calling it, taste testing the books that we've been given, that my team has been given to read. The goal is to read 10 to 20 percent and then mark on our spreadsheet yes or no if we're interested in continuing. The books I get the most yeses will then continue to be read by our whole group and from there we'll pick our favorites to then pass on to other groups. Going into my book wrap up, to start off I finished The Way Spring Arrives and Other Stories. This is a collection of science fiction and fantasy stories written by women and non-binary authors, primarily in Chinese and then translated to English. There are a few essays that it, it has stated that it was written in English. And I bet he read this with Kristen over at Kristen LSFF Reader and Shannon from That's So Po. And I think I enjoy this more than the other two. Because when we were talking about our ratings, I think I ended up rating it higher. And it was primarily because of how the collection ended. The beginning kind of caught me off guard. But I think that's where it was really good. I was reading with better readers because I'm getting to talk through things that I had missed when reading the stories. Yeah. I, I just all of a sudden started to enjoy the collection a lot. So since there are 20 stories, I'm not going to go give you an accounting of every single one. I probably am, I'm just going to talk about a few of my favorites. One of my favorites was The Mountain and the Secret of Their Names. And this follows a young boy who is growing up in a mountain village where a rocket satellite station has been built nearby. And so he's living with his grandfather currently because both of his parents have gone to the city to earn money. And he's learning the old traditional ways from his grandfather while the modern is creeping in. And he's learning the importance of historical culture. His grandfather is the village shaman. And he's learning alongside what that means. In this village, children receive, well, the boys at least receive, a name and then their next two names are their father and their grandfather showing there's that family connection going throughout history and in their community building they have a record of everyone all the names that is our character as a young boy later he does go with his parents to the city and then starts learning more modern concepts decides that he's interested in becoming like a computer programmer but he still goes and visits the village he grew up in at least once a year. And he gets to see how the village is also coming into the modern times while still retaining some of those historical traditions. And this is really about him coming to accept that he has the power of both the historical and the modern to help preserve his village. And I really enjoyed it. This would be more of a modern story, definitely, because they talk about the 2008 Olympics. So definitely more modernly placed, and I really enjoyed it. Like I said, one of my favorites. Another of my favorites was A Brief History of Binnikin Disasters as Told in a Sinetic Language. Probably butchered that. And this is a story about people called the Binnikins and they talk they actually are from a very ocean world and they there was another society there as well and they talk about having to learn to get along 
and different philosophies that had come across. And then they discovered space and they realized that their son was going to eventually kill them and the Benikins were able to escape. And they came to Earth. And we see all of this from the Benikins character's perspective. It was a interesting flip on the first contact invasion and what that means for human societies. All right, and then the third and last story that I'm going to talk about was New Year painting, ink, and color on rice paper. And this is more of a ghost story quality. A again, it's more set in the modern where a gentleman finds some different antiques, takes it to his friend, who's the main character, to see what is there and if they can be restored and they find this painting that has been ripped up and she restores it. You know what? I said she for the main character, but I don't think it actually ever states it. It just mentioned that most people are surprised by their age and gender. I think I just defaulted to she because that's how it felt in my mind, but I'm going to use they since I don't actually know. It's written more in a first person narrative. So they are a uh, antiqu antiquities restorer and their friend brings this painting to them and they put it together and they paint it it's in the style of a new year's painting which i don't know what that means that I'm, I'm not sure what that culture is but it's odd because the child in the picture has no face and in their hand is an eye and both her and her friend are like well that's really weird and he allows her to take a picture and put it on her social media as showing, hey, this is a project that I've worked on because it helps give her buzz. And somebody from that child's past sees it and then reaches out and wants to purchase the painting. And she learns more about the history of this little girl. It's sweet at the same, at the same time that it is haunting and just very, very interesting, or at least I enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't know what Kristen and Shannon's favorites were, but those were three of mine. Then I finished Eclipse the Moon by Jesse Mihalik. This is the sequel to Hunt the Stars, which came out earlier this year. I think this actually came out in July, but I finished it this month. And I really enjoyed it. This follows Key Eldas and Varo Runko. And Key is very much attracted to Varo, but when she flirts with him, he doesn't respond. And she's like, okay, my feelings are unrequited. I were focused on finding the villain from the first book. So the, the sci-fi plot of this follows directly after the first book's plot. And she asks to go work on a station to have better access to information. She's like their information finder, uh, systems engineer is what they call her. And her captain says, okay, um, and she does know that one of the reasons why Key wants to go to the station is she wants to be able to work through her feelings of Varo, put them aside, so then she isn't feeling miserable around him. Which, of course, backfires. She convinces her captain not to tell anyone, and then Varo suddenly shows up, and he's pissed that she went off on her own. And the love story in this follows a different trajectory. It's both of them like each other, and both of them have been showing signs that they like each other, where everyone else has picked up, but the two of them have not picked up how the other one shows that they like them. So <laughs> it was fun to find out how that works. And then later you get to see, like, well, when I'm doing this, this is, I'm showing that I like you. Oh. I do this, I did this, and this is my way of showing that I liked you. And even at one point, Key goes, we need to learn to communicate better. <laughs> I also like Key a lot. She is a neurodiverse personality, and you get to see how the people around her have just melded with her ways. They, they're there to balance her, and they let her be who she is without saying, here, you must be medicated, or here, you must do these things. Or why aren't you normal? They don't do that to her. They're just like, okay, this is how she is. We know if she's been, you know, hyper-focused on something for three hours, we're going to interrupt and bring her food so that she eats. This ship is a huge found family trope. And this was just a lot of fun to go on this journey and to 
experience the relationship of Key and Varro as they continue to grow close to one another and figure out if that's what they want. Something that I love about this series is consent is huge. Even when you have more of what you would call uh, an alpha quote unquote male, where they're very protective, at the same time, they respect the women that they are interested in and allow them to make their decisions. They, they're like, you have free agency and I will go with you because I respect what you are choosing. So I am really enjoying this. Again, if you've read the first one, the romantic pairings have been set up and I am interested in seeing how everything plays out. I then continued working on Notorious Sorcerer by Davinia Evans. I got the name right this time. And this is a secondary fantasy world and we're following two perspectives primarily. I'm only like in chapter six and it's Sian and Zagiri. And Sian works alchemy and he's trying to gain more knowledge and learning so that he can then one day join this, so join this society of alchemists. Now, he lives in a society where magic is outlawed. So working alchemy is like working, it's cutting a very fine line. And then Zagiri is a part of his gang. They call them bravis, but they're they're more like gangs, but not out for killing and violence. They're more, I don't know how to describe them. They, they kind of go into it and it's more an acceptable part of society without actually trying to hurt people, if that makes sense. I mean, they fight with people that they're, who want to fight with them or yeah I, I'm gonna let you read in in the description of it so it's Zagiri is part of this she's a newer member and she kind of feels out of place in with the Bravi and she's trying to make her way in it and at the same time she's from a more highborn family and isn't exactly happy with taking on the societal expectations of that life and then I just realized I said that there's two perspectives. There are two perspectives primarily. We have gotten a, a third perspective, which added an interesting element at the correct point of time. And it was very pertinent to the rest of the story and what was going on at that time. So I am really enjoying this. The writing is beautiful. And I really like the logic that the characters are showing us. They're working through problems. So... This is probably going to be my primary read for this next week because I really want to finish it. And if I remember right, this comes out because this is an arc and it comes out in September. And then I have picked up Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This is a 2022 release. I originally was not interested in it. I, I don't normally like V.E. Schwab's writing, but my magical readathon. TBR needed a second chance author and after hearing different reviews of this I thought I was like this might work for me so I picked it up and I've only read the first two chapters but I'm really enjoying the writing and the atmosphere and Olivia as a character so this is going to be more like my secondary focus Notorious Sorcerer will be the primary. I forgot. I also picked up The Memory Librarian, and I am buddy reading this with Kristen over at Kristen L. SS, SSF Reader. And I knew it was based off of Dirty Computer by Janelle Monet. I thought that was a song. Ends up, no, that is a movie. And so I watched the movie before I started reading the book. And I find that it it's helping me understand the setting and the world of the book better. I've read the first two, I'm gonna call them novellas. They're pretty long. Like time-wise, I think they were saying like three, hour, three hours, two and a half hours. They feel like novellas. I sometimes wish that short story collections would in the back publish their word count because that would make it easier if you're wanting to recommend for different literary awards because then you would know. Otherwise, I'm just kind of guessing from length of pages or 
when I have something that shows me this is how much time it's going to take. Okay, for my writing wrap up, I didn't write. I was distracted by other things this week. The beginning of Specfus and also the Hugos dropped their virtual programming. So I've been looking at that, trying to figure out what panels I want to see since I will be participating on the virtual side. So yeah, that was more of my focus. I didn't write. I was just distracted by other things, but enjoying myself. However, oh, I forget. I was told about a science fiction writers week through that is being hosted by Pro Writing Aid. That was a free event. I'll, I'm going to share the link down below because I like writing science fiction fantasy. I thought that would be interesting. And it happens to be the last week of August, which then just kind of doubles up on top of the uh, Worldcon, which is what I had which I already asked off for. So I'm like, oh, this is kind of perfect. I have the majority of that week off anyway. I can watch Worldcon panels and the Pro Writing Aid workshop. I am excited. I am very much looking towards, I'm very much looking forward to my vacation. And then for other media, my husband and I were talking, we realized we have missed a lot of different Marvel movies because we don't have Disney Plus, but hey, we have the library. So we ended up picking up Black Widow. And our conclusions are, this should have come out before Endgame and Infinity Wars. It, it came out at the wrong time. And I'm not even talking about pandemic, I'm talking about in the movie cycle. Because of where this was placed in the timeline. I like the movie. I, I also like that the Elena character got to like point out and poke out a lot of different things that are superhero tropes also that she gave uh, her sister shit about the pose and the fact that all these little girls are like oh I want to be like Black Widow and Black Widow's a killer and just you know calling what it is it's like hey where do we actually look for our role models is this the type of role model that you want to see or why would you consider this a role model and I just always really like Rachel Weiss that has been my week 33. I am pumped and ready to go into week 34. Thank you and have a great day.